should be live. Hello, interwebs. I'm back again this week with my weekly stream. This is Angela R. Sasser, fantasy artist, nerd role player, and you might know me from my work at angelasasser.com. Here it is, angelasasser.com. You can go and explore all the various art that I do. For those tuning in for the exalted character that I'm working on, you can find more of that kind of art in the fantasy art section. So go check it out when you get the chance. There's lots of cool stuff for you to explore, including more exalted inspired art. So check it out. This week, I am working on this fellow right here. It's still. Last week, I did a lot of refining. I got this scythe in shape. It went from a single bladed scythe to a double bladed scythe. So tonight I'm hoping I can refine this line work and start getting some color down on it. So wish me luck. Let me know if my voice is not clear or if it's not it's being drowned out by the ambient music I have going. Let me know if there's weird static because I've had a problem with weird static. So yeah, if there's any problems or any questions, toss them up in the chat and I will glance up and see them. Hopefully, eventually, if I don't have all my brain power eaten by drawing. So let's get this show on the road. The line art's actually pretty clean. There's just a few little things I want to finish up. So I'm going to work on that first before I start getting to the fun stuff with color. And look, I've labeled my layers, except for this one that I'm fixing just now. And this other one. I tried to name them all before I hopped on, but I failed. trying to get more organized about my layer organization. So I noticed I forgot an overlap here with these short diclaves, so I'm going to fix that. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. This week went by too fast. I can't believe it's August. I'm kind of freaking out because it's August. Like, there's so much to do this month. I think all of the deadlines have snuck on me at once. So I've got a lot of projects due this month. And, uh, Dragon Con hovering over me. Dragon Con's Labor Day weekend. It's like the big... And I'll be all nerd event here in Georgia. And I'll have my work in the art show. I wish I had a table this year, but alas, no table for me. But that means I get to wander the art show floor, pestering my other artists. It'll be a lot of fun. It's actually kind of nice to be able to go and enjoy the convention without having to worry too much about smiling and selling things. So it'll be it'll be nice. I might even cosplay, which is something I haven't done in a long time. I've usually gotten too ch tired and cheap just from having spent spending all the money on pre prepping art and whatnot for the shows. So this year I might actually cosplay. It's very tempting to be a red mage from Final Fantasy because, oh man, they're just hella cute. They are amazing looking. They have these, this swashbuckler mage look and they have rapiers that turn into wands. They're just really cool. 
Oh, hey, I have someone in the chat. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully I'm not all drowned out by static this time. Always nice to have people in here so I don't feel like I'm talking to myself. I uh, hope your week has been good. To clean up some of these lines here that I hastily threw down last time. And I am, for the record, using some line stabilization to help with Lazy Nozumi. And that's just this little application right here, Lazy Nozumi Pro, that just hooks in with Photoshop and I can control the amount of stabilization. So that's nice. That's helpful. So I've been looking into trying out a program like Manga Studio or Eclipse Studio, as it's called now. Uh, I should, but I'm already going, so eh. I want to bore everybody. I get all shy if there's more than like two people in here. I'm like, oh god, I have to entertain all the people. Ooh, that hand needs redrawing. He's got like major Lego hand going on. Time to redraw. <laughs> I don't blame you about Clip Studio because I used it back when it was just Manga Studio. Oh, excuse me. Allergies. And uh, it did some cool stuff then, but now they've added like 3D studio features, build scene features, screen tones, um, animation. It's just, it's got so much stuff. Which is pretty cool. I mean,. I'm really intrigued by the thought of animation and if they'll let you combine animation in PDFs. Because I know interactive PDFs are a thing now. Okay, what's this layer? Border. Okay. But yeah, I need to... I really like to look into Clip Studio EX because it'd be nice to maybe not have to pay $10 a month for Photoshop. Even though that's not a lot, but it adds up if you're just paying it for the rest of your life. Granted, I'm sure there will be paid upgrades for Clip Studio. So the Photoshop Cloud subscription has a nice thing where you basically get to try out new features and you get upgrades so that's it's not all bad but eh. I like I like having the option Yay, tablet. I could not live without my tablet, I have to admit. Or rather, the I have a Cintiq. I used to use... I used to use an old Intuos. But I definitely like having the 
contact with the screen. Just feels more natural. I could definitely not go back to a regular tablet now. So I hope nothing ever happens to this thing, because I'm not sure when I'll be able to get another one. This music is super soothing. I'm just like making me yawn. So we're going to change to another mix. I will keep underground cave in mind for when I need to get to sleep at night. Because my stupid brain is full of insomnia. Hmm, let's see. Temple Gardens, maybe? I like the picture they chose. Kinda has the same flute. <laughs> that flute will put me to sleep. I liked Ninja Party. Let's do Ninja Party. turn off the guy that's like turn down the gibbon because I remember that was weird and the dude that's like talking I kind of wonder what he's saying and if it's something random like french fries cheeseburgers blah, 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 blah. and then you don't know someone just put it in the song because it sounds atmospheric And yeah, I had to ease into this antique because it is quite an investment. I got one of the really small ones secondhand. So like an old 12WX. And I got used to kind of drawing on that cheaper one until we were lucky enough to get a hand-me-down of a one of the nice... 21 X's. My husband surprised me with it when I was gone for a trip and I came back and it was on the counter. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely can't recommend the, the Zintique enough. It's, it's a really nice piece of equipment. Although I'd really actually like to try the Surface. The thing that kind of stands out for me is with the Cintiq is that you have the shortcut buttons on the side. But it gets kind of frustrating to use because Wacom's drivers always drop. And it's always when I'm in the middle of, of a deadline and they're just like, Bleh. don't like don't like you anymore and they drop my drivers so you have to waste some time during your deadline to reinstall them yay bringing more finesse to the lines here because they it's supposed to have a nice badass tattered cloak but it's Looking a little too smooth in some of these areas. Yes, more tatters. Hopefully I don't snivel too much into the mic. Allergies are killer, man. I think I'm just allergic to Georgia at this rate. 
and all the happy flowers in summer and hot. I can't wait for autumn. I have any dirt on this character to share. But I kind of said all there is about him in the last chat or the last hangout. He has no secrets. He is very straightforward. Oh! I just remembered there is something about this character I didn't share. His big motivation right now. How could I forget that? His big motivation is again representative of my husband breaking the game because that's what he does. He's a game breaker. So his character, his mighty goal right now is to purify soul steel. So, because he learned through his walkabout, I suppose you'd call it, just how the souls inside of it are in agony, since he's in tune with spirits, and that's kind of his theme right now as a character in development, is that he's becoming like a kinder, gentler reaper of souls. Who is a ninja of justice. But, so he's almost got it. He just learned that he could use the help of a water aspect to purify corrupted essence. Because after he killed a demon in one hit, <laughs> breaking the game again, the demon left this nasty puddle of corrupted essence in the middle of the town and so Knight had to help clean that up and from observing that cleanup he was able to see that you could alter essence at its core and of course there's no precedent in the rulebook it's just like this is soul steel and as far as we know it's not really possible to purify soul steel or put the spirits inside at rest but hey that's what souls are all all about right they they're there to break rules and reinvent the universe so my character's funding his research Clara is funding his research and she's interested in that as well because it's just it's pretty she's pretty disgusted by the idea of soul steel but man the perks in combat getting essence back if they could make like a solar version of the soul steel that would be so cool So we'll see how he attains this great goal of his. We had a name for it. I forget the name that we came up for the, like, not grow soul steel. Probably like sun steel or, or something like that. Spirit steel. Solar steel! <laughs> I love it! Not to be confused with Or Halcom. It's kind of funny, you think his goal would be to seek vengeance against his master, but he's actually 
that's not his main goal right now. His main goal is to do the soul steel. Solar steel. So he's actually not as selfish as my character. He was like, what? The world's in her Yozy attack? Dang it, I just want to stab this other guy that killed my father in the kidney. Why can't Yozy just wait? Some of my sloppy overlaps. This is why digital takes me forever. It must be clean. Nobody will see them, but I will see them. I know they're there. It's like, I don't know why these lines down here got so sloppy. They just, they're all the same length, or same width, rather. So I probably just drew them really quickly without paying attention to the amount of pressure I was using. Welcome to the chat. John more ninjas. Or rather the same ninja. More of the same ninja. It's looking clean. I will maybe even get to color tonight, and that would be exciting. That is always the fun part. I've had any issues this year. I probably have, but I think it's been okay now. It's, I recall the one of the driver updates wasn't so cool, and I had to roll back my drivers, but I can't remember when that was. Probably when the drivers dropped, as they randomly do. But not lately. It's been it's been okay in recent times at least. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's why I think that Wacom will really have a run for their money if, if Windows can get on this, the what the studio computer they've been pushing and start making some hardware that artists and animators can use. Because if, if there were ever another option, I think I'd go for it. Something that promises more stability. And maybe just has hot buttons, because I love the hot buttons. Except for when the drivers mess up, my hot button shortcuts are dropped too, so that makes it hard to keep doing this.
to battle. I have the Cintiq 21UX. And I've been lusting after the companion or a surface book. Because I like the, sur uh, the space of the surface book. And the idea of having, you know, the whole computer in there and it's just a pretty machine. It's such a pretty machine. Wrinkles before. Oof, these look sloppy too. Yeah, I gotta pinch your pennies for that surface book. It's still pretty expensive. Sometimes I wish I were a famous reviewer or something so I could be like, get free stuff for review. But I am not that famous yet. Would be pretty cool to review stuff though. One day. Too many things to do. Yeah, I've been thinking that if I ever got the Surface Book, I probably would sell a some of my devices since it combines everything. I've also been considering the iPad Pro because it's it's a bit cheaper. It's it's definitely more portable and light and a lot of the artists that I've seen who got one say that it, it's very natural to draw on the iPad Pro with the, the like special art stylus that you can get. So that's an option too, but Gotta pinch my pennies for that one, too. I wonder why they call this song Ninja Party. Doesn't sound like they're partying. Maybe they're meditating together and that's like how ninjas party. Or did I put it on one of the Zen ones? No, this is ninja party. But yeah, maybe if I have a super good Dragon Con, I can get upgrade some equipment here and it'd be nice to have a mobile option so I don't have to be chained to the computer here. Hmm. Nice to leave the studio and work and sit in Starbucks and be a cool kid. All right. 
Alright, it's time to commit these lines. I forgot to add a segment. Nope. That's why you gotta look for a minute. Forgot a segment in the armor. Decided he should have segmented lacquer armor here too. It just adds a little more visual interest to his forearm guards. All right, catch you later, man. Thanks for hopping in. So tell me, have I had any static at all since you've, anyone has been online? Because that static was so weird and mysterious before. Although I think we figured out it was a segment on my mod mic that was had gone bad. Fingers crossed that we fixed the problem. Yay! I'm so happy we fixed that mysterious static. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Sure, driving you guys crazy too. <laughs> All right. Could it be that I'm ready to color? I think I am. Yay. Obsessively save. Alright, I think all my loops are closed. Yeah, ugh. I was so annoyed when I went through that last recording too, and I was like, why static? You interrupt the best part of every story. It's like, let me tell you the most amazing thing that happened. And that's the most amazing thing. Oh, I forgot to turn off work rave again. Go away. Uh, 
I will just ruin my anatomy. Okay. And now I'm going to combine all of these layers into one line art. And color. Okay, I need to stop fiddling. Just be happy with the lines, Angela. Just love them. Accept them for who they are. So you'll actually get a picture done. Instead of obsessing. Love the lines. But I see a gap. It's right there. No gaps. Okay. I'm actually going to color pick from the colors that Raelia used because I really liked them. She chose like some really nice blues and purples for him. Ooh, goodness. It's only 8.30. Wow, I'm sleepy. And I'm getting old. Although to be fair, it's just been a long week. <laughs> Conventions are very tiring. And I'm not even at the convention yet, that's the sad part. So what I'm doing right now is, um, I like to lay down a base color because, uh, if you just kind of, oops, if you just use the magic wand to select the segments, you'll end up with little white parts where your lines are and sometimes that can really mess you up later on when you're trying to color or if you need to change something then you have like a weird white distortion <laughs> let me see if I can replicate that so you guys can see what I'm talking about so say I just want to fill in like his mask and face magic wand leaves this little edge of white around it no matter what you do 
even if you up the line to uh, the selection tolerance. So I just prefer to lay in total flats like this. And of course I'll have to erase some of these little holes. And also I'm working in, in a flat cell shaded style, so this is how I always start with that. Or start with a flat base layer of color. Just makes things easier. Oh yes, the outline, I'll show you. The outline was on its own layer. Let me do this real fast. So what I did is I took all the line work that you saw earlier, made a group out of it, and then copied that group, because I like to preserve the sketch stuff just in case. I just, I like to have it in case I need it an isolated selection of something. So I keep those, the old group with all the different parts in it, just hidden. I don't like to let go of things. <laughs> so at any rate, I duplicated that layer with all the line work. So now you have just, the line is all one layer now. And then what I did is I just used the magic wand To select everything outside of the figure. That's why I'm so obsessive about making sure all my loops are closed because it won't this method won't work if you don't close all of your loops and make sure your line works really clean. So then I just hit control shift I to shift the selection to fill in the inside instead of the outside. And voila! That is how I made the base layer. Like can see I missed a gap between his finger. That's the only thing about doing things this way. Sometimes you miss the gaps. But they're easy enough to erase. So another reason I like to do things this way is because it helps you uh, isolate the selection of the figure. So when I'm going to add different flats here, let's start with the skin because the skin always kind of sets the mood. Actually, he's a little paler. I can always change that layer, so you don't have to. Your colors don't have to be perfect because they're all going to be on their own layers, so you can alter them. But when you hit Control on the layer, it selects it. So now that I'm on the new layer, I can sit here and not worry about getting outside the lines. And since this is going to be below everything, I can be even sloppier about it if I want. I know there are actually some there are actually some programs that you can get or filters or like actions you can get for Photoshop that will sit here and take all these closed areas and turn them into flat colors. 
so you can select them and do color flats easier. I think they're just called flatters. And that just helps coloring go so much easier. I know comic book artists have to do it a lot because, um, you know, when you're doing, you're colorizing a whole page, it's, it's good to have the flats separated quickly. Let me not forget to layer this, to name this layer so my layers don't get out of control again. Hey, don't don't feel bad about uh about being you know not as knowledgeable in digital because I've been at this for a couple of years having come from being a traditional artist and I swear I'm still learning stuff about Photoshop like I am probably doing everything the hard way and you just got to keep practicing and learning and trying new things I've tried I don't think I use the same work method in every picture I always am trying something different and that just helps you learn what workflow works best for you because like this might not work so well for other people but it works for me so I do it you know just have to keep practicing I, I still feel like such a noob at Photoshop. There are probably a thousand ways to do anything I do much easier. <laughs> Right now I'm just erasing, using the eraser to tidy up these areas a little. We have skin! This part is so meticulously soothing. This is like meditation for me to sit here and obsessively fill in these spaces. It's just so relaxing. It's like zen. Just, just like pay me to fill in, to be a color flatter. I think that is an actual job. I will make your colors flat. I like to make colors flat. Alright, that's enough of bird garden. I don't think we ever decided what colors this character has for the trim. So this ought to be fun. Oh wait, I forgot some areas. Got his mesh. Oh, 
and actually there's a really really great site that will help you learn the basics of Photoshop that I like to recommend to everyone because Matt Kaur has an amazing site his voice is really soothing but not so soothing that it puts you to sleep and his tutorials are really short and to the point and they're free that's the best thing about him so I'm gonna link this in chat I've even gone through this just to refresh myself on a lot of the basics that I didn't even know existed in Photoshop. So I'm gonna link this in the chat. Boom, you have link. Check that out. That could help you feel a little more confident with digital. He just has so many great on-point videos to learn from. So Matt Core, Control Paint. He actually has um, a concept art course I've been slowly but surely going through as well that's pretty well done. Talks about shape language and suggests ideas that you can, like exercises you can do to practice. Like one of the fun exercises I did with his course was to take two animals and merge them. And I merged a lynx and a peacock. And it made this really cute creature. Actually, brief break to show you cute creature. Cute creature break. Because I've put it in my exalted story. They are wandering around at a party that my character goes to. And they're cute and you're going to see it. Pelinx. Pelinx or... or I think that's what I'm calling them. But yeah, I just love that. You can't tell me that this adorable, arrogant looking peacock lynx thing wouldn't make a great suit of arms for uh, someone in Exalted, like some kind of rich family. Yeah, I just, I love it. They're great. Okay, back to ninjas. Oh, I guess I should explain why that was helpful. Um, yeah, the exercise you basically drew, you need sketched from reference what the animal is like, and then you would sketch from memory to see how much of the shape you retained, and then you would draw your own unique thing afterwards. So, yes, that ends my commercial for control paint. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I think I want his cloak to be brown. I'll just pick a random brown for now. I see some mesh I forgot to color there. It's already coming together with that cloak popping out the figure. Man, he just looks so cool. The problem is, he looks too cool. All the other characters look bland by comparison now. Knight is just stealing the show.
go through and see if there's some random mixes I could find. Kind of falling back on the same old mixes. Although if I get really, really obsessive, I could come in here and make... Because like, you can come in here and make custom mixes. I could totally come in here and make some exalted mixes. And I would probably never be seen again because I would just spend hours making mixes. I wonder if someone has done exalted. Let's see. Exalted. It'd be awesome if someone did. I saw um, someone did the Liza Locke Lamora mixes. They did mixes for each location. It was pretty cool. That's a novel that's about these awesome thief guys. I need to finish reading that one. Yeah, I, I love any free music recommendations. I probably will end up paying for paying for a streaming service here at some point. It's just, you know, an extra $30 a month that I can't really justify right now, so we have to make do with the freest of the free. And at some point I will just go through ambient mix and find some good ones and preview them before I'm sitting here being finicky about music during streams. Hmm. I do like this kind of plum purple up here too. That seems like it should be an accent in his clothing somewhere. Maybe the trim or his pants. Hmm. We'll put it as trim for now and then we can use the color slider to preview those colors. Yeah, I've seen some of the, the free ones that say, yeah, they're free, but you have to listen to the app. <laughs> it's, it's very jarring for me, too. Can't do it. Let me get this bit of skin before I forget. Oh god, there's a dog barking. <laughs> I can't take I can't take the dog barking. I lived in an apartment complex where our neighbor dog barked all the time at 2 a.m. and everywhere every every time of night. Can't do dogs barking. Ooh, Inquisitor's quarters. That sounds interesting. I can dig it. It's an obtrusive. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure I'll leave the mesh showing that much skin, but for now it is, so... Because it amuses me, it would be there. 
But I'll probably end up making that kind of like a woven armor of some sort. I think mechanics wise, he's supposed to be in a buff jacket. <laughs> but man, the, 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 I don't like the buff jacket in the book. I gotta jazz that thing up. His, his cloak is the buff jacket. Yeah. It's just like half the guns. I have the, the guns that I want to give Clara. I gotta change the way that prayer piece looks because it's... I don't like the one in the book. No offense to the artist, but just the dragon wrapping around the barrel, I just, nah, that ain't me. Especially because it's described as a intricate, kind of almost future tech piece of weaponry with, um, with script work on it. I just feel it doesn't match, so... All the weapon redesigns. It'll be fun. Of course, I can't really draw guns very well, but that's what makes it fun. I'll learn new things, expand my horizons. Since mostly I draw pretty ladies with flowy lines. That's been my work art lately. Lots of Art Nouveau stuff for those who don't know. That gap looks weird. We're gonna fill it in. Actually, I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Hmm. I think it is supposed to be his collar. But it looks strange. Eh, I'll fix it later. <laughs> yeah, no offense to the artist who did the, the weaponry in the book. Because I know that still took time. But yeah, it's, I noticed some of the weapon art got reused as well, and you know, I suppose that happens. But it would just be a lot of fun to redesign them and make them match the really amazing descriptions that they have in the books. And I need to remember this particular ambient mix for when I write. There's something about a crackling fire that makes me want to curl up and write. Oh, which I'm really wishing I had time to do this week. It's been so busy. I've got to get so much stuff ready for the convention. And also, I think I have... Two proje three projects due at this around the same time at the end of this month, so I've really got to get in gear. So no time to write, and I am just having such withdrawals. Got to get Clara's story finished before I'm an old lady, and nobody cares anymore. I 
I've at least had time to write lots of obsessive notes in Scrivener. So the rest of the story has been bullet pointed out, or let for the rest of the first story arc anyway, has been bullet pointed out so I can go back and write when I finally get some time. Now that I color this in, I notice there's a funny tangent between his foreshortened arm here and his shirt. Well, I'm going to fix that. It looks weird. Alright, that's a little better. So now it is just a matter of putting in a flat color for each and every element in here. So I like to have them isolated so I can do various effects. Like anything leather, I might do an effect on that, like a masking effect, so it's easier to have all that stuff on one layer. Instead of having like the brown of this on the same layer as the cloak. Because when you can isolate it, then you can change the color of each element if you change your mind later, which I do change my mind a lot. And say I want to make this leather look a, li a little less, like, kind of deer leather and make it more traditional cow skin, which I think you usually see that kind of burnt umber look to it. Then you can just go to fill, preserve transparency, and it'll just change that like that instead. 
it'll change just the one element as opposed to changing everything. But then also you end up with a million layers, so that's the downside. Some people like to save selections. So they can always reselect part of a single flattened layer, but I like to do it this way. Chilled caffeinated cacophony. I'm curious. So are you working on any anything fun lately, Akrosian? I'm probably horribly mispronouncing your username. I'm probably not going to leave them this color, but I just need to fill them in with something. Of course, my, my husband was no help when I asked him, well, What colors does Knight wear? And he just kind of blinked and stared at me like, he's a ninja, what do you think he wears? <sighs> My husband. So, darkness was the answer. <laughs> Alright, I can dig just saying, Echo. Yeah, our, our game is on hiatus right now too, because our, our GM, uh, he wants to be a player, so that's cool. We're going to hop into D&D uh, &D next and give him a break from GMing so he can experience being a player for the first time in a long time. So while I'm sad that Exalted is on hiatus and Clara hasn't gotten to go down her death list yet, I am excited that we're playing D&D, because &D, none of us have played in years. And it sounds like it's going to be fun. 
My friends are making up some crazy characters already. Ooh, markers. I miss markers. That was actually the first, like, art material I ever got into was markers. Before I ever discovered watercolor or color pencil. Prismacolor, yo. And then Copic. I am coloring him darkness colors. Dragons sound cool. Yeah, I can't draw dragons either. <laughs> they always end up looking like dogs. get the hair and the eyes in because that's where you can start setting the mood for the picture getting all that fun personality stuff in first I let myself get distracted by all the other stuff I think he just has black hair but is it a raven black For all that romance novel color descriptions. Cool. Yeah, mostly I whip out the markers these days for doing um, fashion sketches. Mostly just work in grays and then colorize the gray in the computer. Which is kind of a fun process. Haven't gotten to do that in a while, but it is very fun.
purple hair ninja. I kind of like the pur dark purple, but I know that's not what his hair color is. Trying to find a good mid-tone here, so not too dark that it'll drown out my line work, and not too light that it looks odd either. I think this blue is just a touch too saturated for a ninja. for the eyes. Kev couldn't pick an eye color, so he has like the most Gary Stu purple eyes. But he makes him look red to intimidate people because he has that disguise skill. Though it is a smart way to bullshit that your character has all the eye colors that you like. Man, he's abusing that disguise skill. I totally need to work to learn it. <laughs> Such an Uchiha. Sasuke's distant cousin. That's alright, because they're cool. I will not even front. Alright, he's coming together. I feel like I need to bring that red into some of the rest of this. Maybe a darker, less saturated red.
do like this design with a bit more warmth to it. That makes the accents stand out a bit more. But I'll probably change it later. The joy of layers! But yeah, it's it's nice to kind of take a moment out of the week and draw on this fun stuff. This is just pure fun time for me. To break away from the stuff that I normally do. I need this chill out. <laughs> I haven't quite decided on the colors for the lacquer yet. I think in my references it was all black shiny gloss lacquer with red. No, with gold. I was wrong. That kind of cool manta ray leather it looks like. Plus the shiny black lacquer on top. That gold Red and black is a really sexy combination, though. Maybe a little too bright for this character, but still pretty cool. I don't know why I didn't finish that line there. Hmm. 
you say you're trying to develop a setting or find one? I think a good place to start is uh, the player experience. Like, what do you enjoy playing? Like, I think Exalted has grabbed me because, number one, I really like rich world building. And there's so much great culture and society to dive into. It's the same reason I love... Same reason I love Vampire the Masquerade back when I played that. And I think I like playing, like, a kind of a... Supernatural figure with powers. I kind of draw that connection between Vampire the Masquerade and Exalted. Because he also had cool super backstory and... The Masquerade. And I realize now that I'm playing d and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not a super person anymore. That's so boring. Although it, there is an appeal to watching a character grow from a squishy level one into an utter badass later on. So there's that sense of progression, I guess. That's nice. But man, I got to start out at such an epic level in Exalted, it's going to be hard to go back. Oops. And we need a music change! <laughs> Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this one. This one sounds fun. Darkness. Persona inspired, you say? I am intrigued. I'm kind of new to Persona in that I played Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and never beat it because it kicked my ass. But I've watched my husband play through Persona 5 recently and it was so much fun. And he kind of gave me an overview of what the other Persona games are like, so I love just the weirdness and all the designs in that game. They're really, really cool. So, you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. <laughs> yeah, five was this, was very strange. But I I 
kind of liked the whole you're trying to be a high, the perfect high schooler, but also some kind of crazy Venetian mask themed Sailor Moon heart thief. I kept thinking of Sailor Moon and like how the whole story revolved around stealing people's hearts. This is very Sailor Moon esque in plotline. Well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> it was a thematic mess, you're not wrong. It was such a fun one. Yeah, poor Anne. That whole life drawing session for the artist. It's like, one, yay, thanks for characterizing artists as creepers! And two, like, yeah, she shouldn't have never been forced into that situation. I guess, spoiler alert, kind of, for Persona. Yeah, that character gets put in a lot of roles that are not cool. But other than that, I enjoyed the rest of it. I did like other, some of the other things they did do with the artist character that I did think was spot on was uh, him being really cheap about food, because that was totally like, me and my whole art major crew back in college. We were just like the cheapest about food and whenever you got food you would enjoy it, no matter what. So there are some things that I, I was amused by that they did with him, but yeah. he. It was mainly that part about, like, ugh. the whole life drawing session thing again. I promise most of us are not creepy like that. Or at least we'll know when you're uncomfortable if you don't want to pose for someone. <laughs> I will say, 
that fighting game that's coming out with all of I think it was all of Persona and Blaze Blue and just the giant super mega crossover looks amazing. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, the one night that Raelia's not on, I actually name all my layers and organize them. Sadness. Tether. I'm trying to think what you're talking about with the confident ranks with the art curator. I watched most of it, but I, I didn't play it myself, so I might have missed some things. Okay, time to fix this thing that looks weird. Need new music. Temple of Storms? I'm intrigued.
I do remember something about the artist's mom and how it was very terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you're letting this guy go? Because he's sorry now? Wow. A lot of that game was, to me, wow, you're letting this terrible person go because they're sorry now. <laughs> Maybe I'm not a very forgiving person. But all of those people needed to be in jail. <laughs> or something. There were just some scumbags in that game. Of course, saying that, I might have missed where some of the characters did turn themselves in. I think the gray works. Yeah, I seem to recall some other people uh, confessing and other things happening to them, so. I wouldn't say everyone goes unpunished, but yeah, I just remember thinking every other time I looked up, it was like, whoa, that guy's a real scumbag. Thanks, Persona. Yeah, I think that's where I got confused in that game, since I was just watching it, was I would want a follow-up after kind of briefly seeing all the terrible things that villains did, and then I'd be like, oh, I guess the dungeon is ended. Next dungeon. I, need, I just need to play it myself and see because I love all the designs of the monsters I would just go run around catch them all like demon Pokemon which is basically what Nocturne was <laughs> my husband always gets on to me about that he's like it's just Pokemon why don't you just get a Pokemon and I'm like because it's demons and it's cool and I just love the designs. I don't need Pikachu. I, I, I need, like, fallen angels and, and freaking fairies. It really was just fun seeing all the... I, of course, I collected all of the cool angels and demons and stuff. And it's kind of neat to see the different mythologies that they turn into monsters for the game. Some of them I didn't even know about. I'd be like, what yokai is that? Funky. It's kind of educational. Maybe I'll play another game when I'm not playing Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> it kind of stops me from playing other games while I'm subscribed. But it's kind of nice. It's, it's like this brain shut off. Helps my brain soothe 
all of the random things that I'm thinking about at night. And it's it's also nice to hop on with friends and run some dungeons. And play with emotes for like 30 minutes. I have to say that the, um, er, what's the newest Pokemon? No, it's not Sun Moon. Maybe it is Sun Moon. It's the one where you're on the island and it's kind of Polynesian inspired. I have to admit, it looks like fun. And I love Team Skull. Their theme song is great. And I heard that, that they're pretty cool too once you get to learn more about them. And it, it just looks like it is a lot more fun than a lot more appealing to me than some of the other ones were so I might might get into Pokemon if I you know ever stop playing Final Fantasy yeah my husband's huge into Pokemon And he's also told me told me about some of the creepier ghost Pokemon and the the cool psychic Pokemon. I have to admit, those are the concept for the psychic and the ghost ones are really neat. I've been hearing that a lot from Pokemon fans who are like, "Yeah, Sun Moon is." has really brought them back into it and made it fresh again. So I'm I'm glad. Hell, if you're tempting people like me who are just like man Pokemon, then you know you're doing something right. But I don't know, I've I've got Monster Hunter to play too, you know. Monster Hunter And then there's a new Monster Hunter coming out too. I want to make all the barbecue and hunt all the monsters. And make all the crazy pretty fashions that take a thousand bug monsters to make. <sighs> I think we thought we'd agreed that the scythe energy is going to be red. So super bright red for now.
Yeah, it's looking hot pink. <laughs> yeah, leave it on leave it on this red. Okay, so now the other fun thing I really love to do with this part is to lock the line layer so I can colorize parts of it. Zoom in so you can see this in action! So now these will look less like weird blades. Oh, I can see where I got his hair red. Whoops! Easy to fix. Or if I want a lighter color, that probably shows up better. So now it actually looks more energy instead of less solid. And because the layer is locked, I could sit here and be really sloppy about the lines and not have to worry. Keeps me in the lines. I'll probably do something with the script work here, too. Which I imagine is only glowing and active when he has the scythe laid out. you're in for a treat then if you've never played Monster Hunter they're coming out with World soon and it's gonna be crossplay I believe between uh, different formats and it's gonna be on a console for once so we can finally play with our friends who don't like handhelds or don't have handhelds so that'll be really cool and it'll be console graphics for all the awesome monster designs I'm really excited about it I uh, can't wait to play. Whew, and it is 10 p.m. Wow, the time flew on this one. Time flies when you're making flats. So here's my progress. I think I did pretty good progress. I still have a few flats to lay in. And I still have to settle on the colors. I like where it is right now as far as colors, but I'll, I gotta check with the husband whose character this is. Make sure he has darkness enough. Oh, um, Monster Hunter World I think is coming for PC and PS4, but don't quote me on that because my memory is mush. But I want to say all major consoles? But yeah, check it out. But yeah. Good progress tonight! Woohoo! Let me wait and do one last thing before I shut down. Whoops. I always like to lay in some something that is not white. A not white background just so that white isn't so blaring and it helps me get a better sense of my colors all right he's coming together Woohoo! and on that note i am gonna wrap for tonight I'm gonna end with the usual shameless plug if you want to see more of my art Go to angelosasa.com and you can see all the art. If you want to see more of the fantasy art I have, you can go to 
the icon that says fantasy art. And if you really, really like my art, toss me a dollar at Patreon. It gets you all the wallpapers and a discount, access to my private Discord, all sorts of cool things. So yeah, support me on Patreon. I would love you forever if you do. And thanks for joining me tonight. Those who did hop in the chat room, it's always good to see you. And on that note, I'm going to sleep. Or I'm going to go play Final Fantasy, one of the two. So, check you later. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>